Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the Yarcam 7R so this is the Alpha series and with this amplifier with the R version you also have an 8R the R is just simply indicating to you that it is a remote control version so just for clarification on that if you have one of the genuine original remote controls for the 8 or the 7R the remote control function that you had was to raise and lower the volume control and then you could also put the amplifier into mute and when you press the button that just disengaged this speaker protection relay at the rear and then disconnected audio then to the uh, to the connected speakers so the issue with this amplifier was the owner had had it from new so you're probably going back maybe 25 even like 30 years I would say quite a while ago and what the customer described here was just over a period of time, you know, they, they'd lost, I think it was on the right channel, the audio, then they switched then to the left channel and the new speaker set two. So effectively they just had two left channels feeding two speakers and then eventually he kind of lost uh, all audio pretty much. So when you took the, the top cover off this, it's classic of this series of amplifiers. So you have these slotted vent holes at the rear where you have the MOSFET uh, audio output uh, devices and the first thing to do is just to clear out all of that dust and dirt so normally you can use a stiff brush long bristled or you can use a compressed air hose and if you don't want to have one of those then you can buy a can type air hose which would not or air, air blaster that would be used to create or to clean PCs and keyboards such like and then really it's a systematic approach what you have to do here is just follow a set routine as this issue really wasn't due to an electronic failure it was more associated with an age related issue which comes about with the input selection switch so the first thing you have to do is to remove the fixing screws at the rear so you have a total of five of those and then when you look from the top you have to release the large fixing bolt that goes through the toroidal transformer and then on this version of amplifier you had a ground lead so straightforward to remove that and then you had one fixing screw which is near to the speaker selection relay the speaker protection relay and then you have three additional screws which are close then to the balance input selection switch and the volume control once that's all done you need to remove the plastic front bezel very straightforward you have two screws left and right and then you really need to remove the user control knob so just pull those off and then you'll have some small circular dust covers which are for the input selection bass treble and balance control so just make sure you don't lose those put them to one side and then you can then unclip the front bezel and then to raise up the main amplifier board you just when you look from the top you have two fixing screws which just hold the the, the to a metal fascia where the balance and control potentiometer and treble then connect once you've done that you just need to get a pair of long nose pliers just squeeze on the plastic support which is just to the left and then you can raise the entire board up out of the chassis hold it onto the toroidal for example and then put it then to one side so the next phase is really to get rid of all that dust and dirt so as I said you can use a compressed air hose well that's for the main board remember that as soon as you remove the main board then you're gonna have a lot of dust on the metal chassis so that's all all gets all gets removed and then if you turn the amplifier over the first point of call are the input RCA sockets and as you see in the video some of these are always dry jointed so just a case of flow soldering all of the input RCA sockets and then you then need to look at the MOSFETs so there's two MOSFETs per output channel and these are commonly dry jointed um, you may find cracks around there and then I also resolder the support pins which are then for the heat sink so those are all done reflowed and then I've also focused on the speaker terminals as well it's not uncommon because they are uh, taking you know, a mechanical connection that these can crack over time and you can see from the video what has happened here is there's been a previous repair attempt believing that the intermittent loss of sound or audio was due to maybe a speaker terminal um, which had broken away from the board um, probably not the best repair I've ever seen so D flux was, was used to clean up all of that 
and then those solder joints were remade so they're all bright and clean and there was a slight little bit of damage to the track but straightforward enough then to repair that so once that was all complete then it was a case then to move on to the euro connector so this is the power input again reflow those and then you can see in the video you have the headphone socket there's always dry joints around here remember that headphone socket has switching contacts so when you plug in the headphones it will disengage the rear speaker protection relay so you can have issues intermittent loss of sound could be attributed to that but just general practice good practice just reflow and then what i'm also doing as well is reflowing the uh, speaker set two switch the tone defeat switch as well and also the tape switch who's often a dry jointed and then you should always resolder the user control potentiometers they're often cracks around the pins or you will find that they're greyish and they're definitely dry jointed so all of those should then be done and then what i then move to then is just to resolder the plus and minus 15 volt regulators so that was done and then the video shows and this is a, a really great example you can see the solder pins for the input selection and the switch there is completely dry jointed so that was the issue here why the customer had really no audio at all and the solder connections had broken down over time so you just need to un or really remove the locking nut and then you can then desolder any remaining pins and then that input selection switch can then be removed and what you'll see in the video you can take the input selection switch apart and then what I'm using here is a fiberglass pencil to just clean up all of the contacts internally so I'll remove any oxidization and then I'll then clean it with deoxid agent so that's all clean and then I just pour in there a deoxid lubricating grease just because it's a mechanical contact and then you can then reassemble the switch and refit it back to the amplifier what I will also advise as well when you are refitting this switch just make sure that you push down on the circuit board so the pins from the switch fully protrude through the board through the board and then solder them you don't want to just rely on just push it into the board and then there's only maybe the tips of the pins that you're trying to attach to that don't do make sure they're fully through before you then resolder and then as a matter of course with all of these amplifiers the speaker protection relays are replaced and that is shown in the video so this is an omron g series relay and the reason for that because of the age of the amplifier if you were to cut that relay top off and look at the contacts you'll find that they are heavily oxidized and you may also find mechanical uh, sort of degradation pitting on the switching terminal so just to add the longevity back into the repair simply replacing that that relay there's one other quirky thing which you may have seen if you've, if you've repaired a number of these rcam series amplifiers they look like small little bits of rubber which have been stuck to the left and right hand side of the relay and you think well i wonder what what that is you know are they significant or are they not so there's actually a part number which arcan gave them but they do have a have a, a, a function shall we say so the idea here is is that you, as you have these contacts switching it will emit some low level of uh, emc and the idea of these sort of rubberized um pad shall we say is to to absorb that that level of noise and that's what they're there for so when i refit the new speaker protection relay i simply um, just reattach some more or double-sided self-adhesive tape cut it around the existing um, whatever you want to call them absorbers and then reattach them then to the new relay and then next phase of the repair you can see from the video what i'm doing here is I'm checking the uh, bias current then for the MOSFETs. So it should be about 1.8 to about 2.4 volts. So in this case, I set it to an about a nominal 2 millivolts for each one of the channels, and you just measure across the uh, 0.22 ohm uh, resistors in there. And then you can see in the video, it's, it's about 3.4 plus volts. So that was incorrect. So the channel there was being overdriven, not hugely, but it, not at what it should be so you need to align and then to adjust the uh, bias current for both channels straightforward with a, with a MOSFET you know it, it's not that you have to sort of wait in the same time period as you would do for a bipolar amplifier typically once you set it it holds 
and then run the amplifier you know no speakers connected when you're doing this input controls or user controls just set to midpoint and volume set to minimum and then you can then monitor that and then if you need to make any slight adjustment you know you, you can make that adjustment then and then what i'm also doing as well is i just clean the other remaining user controls so I just take a little bit of kitchen roll and then I'll just raise the amplifier up vertically and then I'll spray directly into the access slots for the potentiometers and just take up any additional sort of deoxid liquid and just soak it up and then what you need to do is just work those user control potentiometers backwards and forwards multiple times once you've done that they should be nice and clean in, in terms of operation no noise you don't need any sort of crackling or rustle noise and it should be very very smooth in operation so when you look at the balance control tone or treble control and then bass these are center dent type potentiometers and then for the volume control again you have access holes left and right but this is a motorized potentiometer so again straightforward you can just spray into there clean up any excess deoxid and then rotate it backwards and forwards and then what I'm also doing as well is just spraying deoxid directly into the headphone socket and then I can then operate or, or push in the headphone jack so that's a quarter inch headphone jack just remove it, put it back in a number of times and then you're just making sure that those contacts are nice and clean and then for this amplifier the only sort of remaining thing to do then was simply then just to give the amplifier a good clean because it had been, I think, probably in storage you know, for a number of years, it was extremely dirty on the outer cover. And what I typically do as well is where you have missing paint, and this is very common on some of the older amplifiers, I just use a very, very fast drying enamel paint. So I have this in multiple colours. So it may well be a flat, mat, flat matte type colour, or it could be a gloss type, but... They use like for modeling, uh, you know, sort of uh, clay models and things, but really, really great because it's an armor based paint. Literally, as soon as you put it on there, or dry within, you know, sort of 10, 15 minutes, even less. And it's almost invisible when you look at the chassis on the amplifier. And uh, overall, really brought this amplifier back, you know, to its original condition. And then, um, only the last remaining thing is to do a full functional check. So that's with the amplifier under load and then just running it through on a number of uh, test frequencies all good and uh, once that was complete just a simple case then of just refitting the top cover on the amp and then it was all good to go and then to be returned back to the customer so thank you very much for stopping by and for listening and uh, i'll make sure that uh, on some of the next tutorials i think there's, uh, there's a morant amplifier that is coming in so again, we'll add that to the different types of repair videos which are coming up on, on the channel. And I keep saying this, you know, I really do appreciate the feedback coming in from all the different subscribers out there. Definitely seen a, a kick up in the number of viewing minutes, but also as well a lot more sort of uh, engagement. So clearly this format is, uh, is working well. And again, if you've got any thoughts or ideas or you want me to cover anything specific, by all means, let me know. And uh, I'll also continue on doing the electronics tutorials as applicable to the audio amplifier. So the next one, which I'll probably post, will be uh, for capacitors. So again, this is a good topic, which often, you know, people have a lot of questions about. So uh, just keep look out for that one. All right. So I wish you all well until the next time. And thank you. And bye bye.